Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Taking out a fun and exciting video for you guys today because we're going through our Linux gaming series again, taking a look at Xenia Canary or Xbox 360 emulation on Linux. Because honestly, with the lower overhead, there is definitely a performance benefit here if you have a comparable system across Windows 10 or 11 to Linux. For good to far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Now if you do notice a few hitches in games that seem to run at full speed that is the shader cache because you have to play these games from start to finish once before everything is cached in which is an unfortunate part of emulation at least on modern systems and there really isn't any way honestly to get around that outside of trying to download some shader cache archives and get them tucked in but you'll see here the first game El Shaddai is Son of the Metatron seems to run totally fine and we will be going back to that but honestly Sydney Canary is always going to be a hit or miss emulator because it is still in active development sometimes games are not going to run at full speed that would run at full speed had the emulation been finalized and sometimes you're going to get games that don't run or have big visual glitches now i don't want you to think that that is me knocking the emulator i think it's an outstanding thing but it is still basically in the middle of its life as far as the development is concerned so some games no matter what spec you throw at them whatever operating system you want to throw at them are just not going to work Take an example here, Project Gotham Racing for this intro sequence, which is clearly playing a movie. Make sure you think that the game is going to run 100% at full speed when you actually get into it, but there's different components under the hood when it comes to emulation, so obviously video playback in Xenia Canary on Linux is perfectly fine. But you'll see here, as soon as you actually get into the main menu, you're going to start seeing a lot of weird graphical glitches, and you're going to start seeing the frame rate absolutely start tanking. Now this is basically having every bit of silicon it can possibly use thrown at it to see if it'll run at full speed so i would be highly surprised if there really was a way to get much more performance out of this although i will say this is using an nvidia gpu and you definitely pay a little bit of an nvidia tax when it comes to linux versus using an amd card but unfortunately my channel does not have the budget to go out and drop four digits on an amd card to see exactly what the difference would be but you can clearly tell as we're actually into Project Gotham Racing 4 here, it definitely looks like it's supposed to look. It just doesn't run at the speed it's supposed to actually be running at. So it's one of those things, when it comes to Xbox 360 emulation, it really is going to be hit or miss which games are going to work and which games are going to be a slideshow, because this definitely is unplayable. If I was to actually pause it and get a screenshot, I could convince you that it would run at full speed. So it seems like at least under the hood, the graphics are working here, but unfortunately, the full speed nature isn't. Let's move over to Deadly Premonition. In my opinion, one of the best games ever made. Is it mechanically one of the best games ever made? Absolutely not. But thematically, it's an absolutely wild ride that's basically Twin Peaks the video game without actually having the license and Spurry 45 nail it on this one. And as we go through the intro sequence again, you're going to see everything looks good. And we actually get into the game, you're going to see that it is running at full speed, but it does one of the strangest things and something I've never actually seen Zenny Canary do. But honestly, that's totally fine. I love glitches. They kind of explain what's going on under the hood what is working and what isn't working because basically emulation has to take all of those different calls of the hardware and then repeat them on modern hardware and emulate how they would function when i mean calls i mean specific things in code that are asking the gpu or other hardware to perform a certain function maybe it might be using a shader maybe it's doing some sort of effect if those things are not written correctly you either end up with missing effects or you end up with glitchy effects because it isn't actually emulating it properly and that's kind of how you can tell when you do see glitches is what portion of the hardware might not actually be 100% working as far as the emulation is concerned. And I'm 99% sure this is definitely running in engine. It doesn't seem like an FMV whatsoever down to the aliasing. And as far as the audio quality on Zenny Canary is concerned, some games just play nothing but this weird humming static. But Deadly Premonition plays the audio perfectly, which is a big bonus because this game has an absolutely amazing soundtrack. So listen, and I'll be right back.
I mean, honestly, in that section, you have no idea that there's any issues with the emulation, and the music sounds 10 out of 10. But as we actually get into the game, you're going to see it is running at full speed. The lighting model is working. The model for Morgan there is perfectly fine, but there's something going on in one of the shaders that just isn't working, and I think that is the area in which water would be exposed, kind of pulling on the ground. Don't forget that there's basically a shader for everything when it comes to 3D rendering on modern consoles. So something about one of the shaders here, at least on the edges, doesn't seem to be correct. It could be some sort of grass as well. I kind of thought it was water there, but if you can remember, leave me a comment down below. But that's obviously not what the game is supposed to look like. And then when we get indoors, it gets even weirder. But honestly, this is absolutely a vibe, and it's one of those things. Sometimes when the graphics are broken, they're more amusing than if they just work, and it can actually tell you a lot about the emulation. I'm not sure if there's some sort of volumetric fog going on on the ground, or some specular highlight here, because Francis York Morgan's hair looks like he has green frosted tips as well. So it's just one of those things. The emulation on this is very close. The game is running at basically full speed, and honestly, this here is a vibe for two big reasons. It's just absolutely insane, and honestly, I kind of just want to play through the entirety of Deadly Premonition with all of these glitches, because it is just absolutely 10 out of 10 batshit crazy in the best ways possible. But moving back to El Shaddai, this is a game where you can see, honestly, there's barely any visual glitches whatsoever, and it wants to run at full speed, minus it caching those shaders in the background. So all of the different components, at least in these scenes, that El Shaddai would use in the calls to the actual Xbox 360 hardware are emulated properly. And that's why you could just take a look at this and think to yourself, it could just be running on a real Xbox 360 HDMI out into a capture card. And that's obviously the goal we want, and even though El Shaddai isn't the most technically complex game, Game. on the Xbox 360 it absolutely has a very distinct visual styling and flair to it and it's one of those things if it wasn't looking correct it would really lose all of its charm and if for some strange reason you've never played El Shaddai before I can't recommend it enough it is absolutely an insane game and I think it is one of the prettiest games of its generation it just absolutely has this otherworldly feel to it and that's because it's actually taking place in another world if you can believe it or not that should be a pun obviously because you can clearly tell this is not our earth but as far as the the performance here. Again, the only time it's dipping frames whatsoever is when it's caching those shaders. And again, if you want to know the specs, I'm not going to read them all off. I put them in the description below so you can understand exactly the hardware that is running here. And maybe if we had an AMD GPU here, we might get a little bit better performance because it is one of those things. I hope one day Nvidia starts keeping up with AMD on the Linux side of things because you do pay that minor penalty. But otherwise, this game is absolutely stunning looking. And again, if I just took a screenshot of this and posted it online, absolutely no one would have any idea that this wasn't running on a real Xbox 360, but that it was running on an Xbox 360 emulator running on Linux. And that really is how good Linux is these days, especially with its lower overhead. You can actually get a little bit better performance out of these emulators than you can on Windows. But it's soundtrack sample time because this game has incredible music that sounds really good coming out of the emulator. So 45 seconds and I'll be right back with a bit more footage to show you. Hey, what's the matter? You don't trust me? I guess. Well, I'd say so far, so good. Huh? You know I can never say no to you. After all, you are the Lord. Yeah. All right. Catch you later. Not only is the sound good in El Shaddai, but as it goes up and down in volume, depending on what's on screen or if you're on a menu, that is exactly how it should sound on real hardware as well. Let's move over to another game, Lost Odyssey here. Definitely has a lot going on because there's a lot of models on screen at once. But if you look closely, you will notice that a lot of them are just copy and paste jobs, and that's so that they can actually keep the RAM usage low on real hardware. Because if you needed to have a lot of characters on screen, a lot of background models, you would basically have them almost be identical. So you had them loaded into RAM once and didn't have a bunch of different permutations of that model that would just eat up that allotment of RAM that the game actually had to run with. But as far as Lost Odyssey is concerned, this footage here, if it's doing anything other than what it should on real hardware, I honestly can't really notice. And that's definitely something you want to be able to say. Now, I do not use magnifying glasses. I don't pixel peep the ever-loving hell to these things. So if you do see something, leave me a comment down below and let me know what timestamp it's at. Because I'm always needing your guys' help because I only have the two eyes or the one set. And like I like to say to you, you have 10 
tens of thousands of eyes, and each one of you sometimes notices something different. And there is such a thing as basically what I call footage blindness. You look at something for so long that you actually end up missing something that is painfully obvious in front of you. A big thanks to Andy D for helping with this footage as well. He's been doing a lot of these Linux captures because he has multiple different Linux machines set up for different testing environments that we can kind of iterate and find out exactly what's doing what on what type of hardware. But as we walk through this big open area here with all these embers on the screen, the smoke effects, that lava there, all the lighting, those are all just different calls to the GPU. And if any of them were wrong, you would definitely see them showing up on glitches as far as the screen space is concerned. But everything seems to be 100% totally good. And leave me a comment down below and tell me, have you ever played Lost Odyssey? This is one that honestly, back in the 360 era, I never actually played around with. I maybe played it for an hour or two a couple years ago, but it's a game that I've never actually spent that much time with it. I'm not even sure why because it definitely has a vibe and a style to it and maybe it's one of those things Zenia Canary could be my next playthrough. But don't forget this emulation is still in active development so unless you read online multiple user reports of people being able to play a game from start to finish this is not the type of emulator that you want to start playing a 30, 40, 50 hour game on because you could end up with a game breaking bug. You could end up with a freezing condition 15, 20, 30, even 40 hours in and that would absolutely just ruin your entire gameplay experience. So for situations like this, any sort of Xbox 360 or even PlayStation 3 emulation, I can't recommend enough to actually check out if people are able to beat the game or not. But you'll see here, even as we bring the menu up, every single bit of text, every single transition is smooth. It seems to be running pretty close to the right frame rate and just looks exactly like it should. And I would say, just like El Shaddai, this one just seems to be like 99% of the way there. But again, if you don't have an absolute horsepower beast of a machine, these are results that you might not get. Because this emulation along with PS3 does require a really good processor along with a really good GPU if you're ever going to try to get these results out of it. But I would say as far as the tests on this video are concerned, El Shaddai 100% wins them even if it has a little bit more hitching as far as the actual shader cache is concerned. It just looks, plays, and feels like the game that I know, love, and remember because this one here genuinely is a really special and really weird experience. If you can't tell already that weird eye looking at you right now, in this game just has absolutely everything you could possibly want. It is like the more serious version of Bayonetta in all the best ways possible. And if you're enjoying these Linux videos as far as emulation on Linux is concerned or general gaming on Linux, leave me a comment down below. If there's any sort of Linux topics you want to see that I haven't talked about yet, also leave that comment down there because these really are test videos to see if I can dedicate more time to setting up different Linux environments and doing tutorials about gaming on Linux because tutorials take a much longer time than just general testing videos and I want to make sure that you guys are actually interested in that. But short of that, we're done. We're going to fight the Green Goblin here and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye